probably within a few hours, I was going to be re reaching a point where, okay, everything's great. And I'm just going to sit back and do nothing. And I feel like before I reach that point, I need to be smacked in the face. You need to fucking, you know. So <laughs> this is my love letter to developer behind Definitely Not Fried Chicken. If you've seen Breaking Bad and you're like, ooh, yeah, actually, I want to do that. Then this game is for you. If you like sim management games and all that, pretty fun game. I've got a few different notes. It's still like, I think in early access. It, this was played on July 1st. Some of these might already be patched, but I'm going to go through some of the things that I love and some recommendations that, so yeah, let's just dive into it. I love the game. This is a super good game. It got me hooked. It took a second to get used to it. Yeah, I restarted the game three or four times because I didn't remember during the tutorial, it showed me I needed to enable certain tasks. So I would have people at my factory and they would just be sitting there doing nothing because they had no tasks assigned to them. I had four or five workers and they were just sitting there doing nothing. And I didn't quite understand because I was like looking at my engineers and looking at my cleaners. They were automatically doing work. So I didn't quite get why my other workers didn't. So once I realized, oh yeah, you got to tick that checkbox, enable the task, then it all suddenly started to click. So in Rumble, they, they've got idle colonist notification. So maybe that's what you do is like a little idle notification. Or each worker starts off with a basic set of tasks, right? So if you're talking about you know, you're first starting up your your weed factory, you automatically have the what the basic cannabis. You have that checkboxed. You have the delivery checkboxed. You have those two automatically checked for each new worker. So it gives the gives the players time to be like, okay, well, why is my why why is it working for green and not for orange, right? Because I sat there for I don't know how long not making any money. <laughs> Anyway, so number one is can't choose when people sleep in factories. What I found is you can choose when people sleep if it's a place of business, like, like a laundromat or a donut shop, you can choose a sleep icon. But if it's in the factory, you cannot choose when they sleep. You can either choose break time or regular time, and they're going to prioritize that based on their, their needs-based AI. So that's one thing. It would be nice to be able to like choose and schedule the factory workers. Say, hey, look, it would be nice to be able to schedule it from you can give some people night shifts and some people day shifts. Okay, so number two is inefficient paths for driving cars. I, I remember whenever I was setting up shop, I was choosing a place to set up my first business and I made sure to choose a place that's close. And it was literally like a block over, but my dude decided to drive like all the way around like an entire block to uh, to get there. So I don't know. I, I would have picked a different place if I'd have known he had to take that long to drive, but I, probably by the end of the game, this doesn't matter. But don't expect the cars to take the simplest route, as I'm trying to say. Number three is cars keep trying to deliver from factories to the donut shop or to like your place of business and no one's there. If you have a delivery and they're, they're going to go deliver at this place, if no one's there to take it out of the car, the car will just sit there idle forever. Or you could probably do a few different things about that. You could just make it to where once they get there, they just drop it off on the ground and then they have to come pick it up. But it is sort of annoying that your car just sits there. So that makes you have to micromanage when you want to deliver because people might not be there to actually get it. Or, I mean, another option is to make it to where the, that somebody would get off work to come pick up the delivery. They'll come from home, pick up the delivery and then drop it off. Either way, I, I think it's a, it's, it's a sort of a pet peeve for me is just because the car will just sit there with full load from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. whenever it could have been making a billion other deliveries. Number four is copy paste on schedules. Whenever you have to, I could feel this getting really annoying later on whenever you're having like a billion shops set up is you know, you make this schedule and you want to make it and you want to copy and paste it for other places. I don't want to have to make the same schedule 200 times. So save or export global schedules maybe as a solution. Medium air fryer broken. Oh, this was like, okay. So that was, I was that was actually not bad. I, I just didn't understand how the donut shop worked. So this is more for any players. If you have a donut shop, every time you get a donut upgrade from your license, you have to like re-review your production line and Make sure that you have all the required pieces and parts because as you upgrade your license, you will get different machines like Wrinkle Machine, like an auto blazer. But in order to make these special donuts, you need to actually build these new machines. Otherwise, you're just you're going to get a, a, a choke point or what it was not a choke point, a bottleneck. Yes, weak, weakest link. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Overall, the game's like super fun. Definitely recommend it to anybody that likes these type of games, sim space, colony management sort of thing. It's, it's a little different. You know, you don't get connected to all of your workers. They do have names and all that, but I felt like I didn't ha- I didn't have quite the connection to my workers, but it's not really about that. These guys, I think it's really, it, these guys are supposed to be expendable. If, you, if you've seen like Better Call Saul, right? Whenever they hire the workers and they bring them inside the shop and they just have to stay in there and they can't leave. That's the idea. So... I don't know how close you would want to get to those people anyways, because it's sort of like, hey, you know, regardless, it's fun. Overall game is 10 out of 10 on potential. This game is great idea, good execution. And as far as the actual rating for the game right now, probably like 8, 8.5 out of 10, just because there's fixes. And once this gets out of early access, woo, it's going to blow up. I think it's great. If it hasn't blown up already, I don't know. It just seems like it, it seems like it has to, to some extent. I think it's great. Like break some bad. Let's call Saul. Let's go. And it's funny. It's like cheeky with, you know, you got like a little Saul character talking to you at the beginning. I really like that. And it looks like there's a major character. Maybe there's a reference there I don't get because all I can think about is like Kentucky Fried Chicken. I thought he was a mayor at first, so I'm like, I'm confused. But I think he's just literally a major because like the Kentucky Fried Chicken reference there. And he's sort of like your competition. As, As soon as you make your first drug delivery, he sends three dudes to cluck you up. And you're pretty much fucked. You you might just let your dudes die. Because as soon as they die, then the guys leave. And then you can go about your business and continue taking care of your shop. That being said, I don't think I ever got attacked after that. So maybe that hasn't really been fully implemented as far as harassment. I think that is something the game is missing. Um, although I do appreciate the fact that it gave me plenty of time to actually figure out the game. I think by the end of my 8, 9, 10 hour session, however long it was, I was on day like 35. And... While the major had talked to me on like day 15 and day 30, I never was attacked again after that first initial attack. So I feel like maybe the pressure can be increased just a little bit, but it also feels to me like the developer's still working on that sort of level of aggression and the pacing there, which is fine. I think that that's okay. I think you're focusing on the right thing at first is because I, I was already hooked with the management aspects of it and setting up new shops and setting up a new 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 trade routes or drug routes and and making sure that all my stores had like one of each cannabis and then delivering all these drugs to all these people that are calling me and so there's plenty of stuff to do don't get me wrong i feel like there there was a point that i was going to reach eventually once i like step back from the game i feel like probably within a few hours i was going to be reaching a point where okay everything's great and i'm just gonna sit back and do nothing and i feel like before i reach that point i need to be smacked in the face you need to you know so (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, good game. Good game. I love your game. So yeah, if you know of any other games that are like this, you know, like RimWorld or like like this game, let me know, because I really date these type of games. Also, if you're a game dev and you would like any tips on your game, let me know. Maybe I can make a video for you like this. Cool. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Sub it, like it, bell it, break it, break bad. Have a good one.